lost myself I thought I had to To be good enough To make you happy I am so grateful to hear you speak about the crying for 10 years because I just, in the last five to six years, I feel like it's just been a growing kind of Niagara Falls of, of crying. And to the point where um, I, I just don't always get a sense of belonging around it, that then causes me to go into fear. And it's improved. I mean, I'm certainly more able to be with it now than I ever have been. But um, it's just not something that people talk about very much. And I think just hearing you speak about it, I'm, I'm very grateful because I'm still building trust. I'm still building trust that I'm not harmed. And I, I know every time I come out of it that I'm not harmed, but when I'm in the midst of it, it feels extremely harmful <laughs> um, a lot of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes there's enough space that I am able to watch, but um, when it really kind of rips through, it is... It's, I, I understand why a lot of people don't go there, you know, and I feel at this point that I don't even have a choice, it's become, it's coming to a point where I really can't stop it, or if I want to stop it, I can, but then the minute I'm alone, you know, or the minute I feel that I'm in a space where I can let it out, it comes out, and, uh, yeah, and it's just so out of my control. And I've been having these memories of just from a very young age how much I grappled with control and and being out of control and particularly particular emotionally out of control and how not okay that was in my family and um and so I'm, I'm now I'm like, do you have a question, Emily, or are you just going to keep talking about yourself? That's, that, that's my thought. But um, I would say that I, um, on Sunday, I'm in a relationship with this man, and on Sunday, and it's the, it's certainly the most vulnerable I've ever been in, in relationship. It's the most I've ever really let myself not know and really just stayed. I mean, you've been, he lives in L.A., and we've been doing this long distance, and and I felt something coming, and the whole day before I was crying, and the whole day of I was crying, and then when we finally spoke, he said that he's really having a lot of doubts about us moving forward in our relationship as it is. And, uh, and I was so shocked, really, at first, and then surprised at how shocked I was, because again, because of these old control issues, I was like, oh my god! I'm really out of control. I'm not, I'm not in control the way I used to be. I, I wasn't, I felt something, but I also felt like we've always just, you know, worked, we've had this incredible ability to communicate, and then it just became very clear that he's been holding on to, like, a bunch of things and hasn't communicated about them. And so they've been building, and then it just was kind of this, so, um, all these questions when I was talking with Kristen earlier this morning, but now I don't really know what the questions are. I think I, I just, um, I was amazed at how, um, even laying in bed that night, how I realized I was still attached to him, attached to what we were after all the work and after all of the, we're free and we take it one moment at a time and we see that all of a sudden, you know, just the mind went crazy about the memories and the future hopes and, you know, his promises and to always be there and, you know, all of that. And, um, and I got really caught up in it and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to get caught up in it and I'm going to go back and that's where I'm at. So. It's <laughs> oh, very transparent. <laughs> so, you, know, you are cracking my open. Yeah, that's good. It's this thing, it's like this thing that that we believe that people are people and that we believe that as a person we want to relate to a person and that there's love in that interpersonal relationship. I mean that's the Cinderella story and, yeah. and that's the way it is and it, it seems like it seems to take a lot of this 
crying and cracking open and it's all good because it all has to come up and it all has to heal. The wound has to heal. It's not going to heal if it's all sealed shut. But it's so intense. It's dysfunctional, you know, and that's why people try to get back into control and shut it down and, and be a, a mature functioning adult, you know, get back to being and, and that's not going to satisfy us either. We, we, there's a love inside of us that is not going to be content with being a mature, functioning adult, even, you know. So, but I, but I feel like um, when I started to just realize that people were just reflections of thought, of consciousness, you know, we think of them as like living, breathing, mind of their own, their own histories and their own ambitions, and you know, we got kind of this construct. Uh, then it's it's kind of it never works out uh, because we're trying to relate to something that's really outside of us and the whole point is to relate to the self that we are the source that that, that created us and the self that we are in on the, with, with, within us so you know then you start to say he says I doubt our relationship and I doubt our future and this and this and this those are the doubt thoughts coming up and and like Jung talked about the shadow self, it's it's filled with doubt thoughts. It's gonna it, I couldn't even like when will this end? How many many years of doubt thoughts do I have to go through and how much darkness? What a dark night of the soul. This is like a a thing that goes on and on. But actually um, you start to feel gratitude for, for all the reflections, like wow, I I I've got some major control issues or doubt thoughts that I I, I really need to look at, and, and he was was just reflecting them back. And in some more, there's even a gratitude for that. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, it's helping me. It 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 helped me. The outcome, that's the, the killer is when we've got the outcome in mind. We've got some kind of a form outcome of how the relationship should go ideally and grow and build and build trust and you know we have these images of People like growing old together, like the notebook. Yes. Dying in bed yes. together. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's what I want. I want a love that will take lovely time. And that'll be curled up with me in bed even when I've got Alzheimer's and I don't know who I am or who it is. It doesn't matter, they're still in bed with me and holding me and then we die together. You know, it's very romantic. But you know, it's but even that, you know, it's like it still has an outcome. In mind, and, and we've tricked ourselves into believing we see some witnesses of what seem to be mature, healthy, and die in bed relationships, <laughs> and and then we go, oh, okay, that's the ideal. That's what I, I'm not going to sell for anything less than that. And there's something even more more vast than that. This unconditional love, agape love, it's it's spiritual in the truest sense. And it seems like all this other stuff has to, to go, including specialness. Yes, it does. Did you write a song? I certainly did. About a special relationship that you had? Yeah. And you felt just like she did? I did. And you had to go rise up? I did. My call for agape love must have been strong. Actually, I wrote this before, before. I came into community and started practicing intensely and doing specialness. But I was reading the course and yeah, um, yeah, I did write this song um, yeah. called Ever After, Happily Ever After. Mm. Oh. Happily Ever After. That's certainly what I wanted. And, uh, you know, the least of all me. I would have thought could have undone that I want a person to grow with and walk to God with. You know, it was, yeah, it's just, you know, I know it's for all of us. But you know, and you learn it's like a good thing, one person forever, you know, we have to unlearn everything. So yeah, I wrote this. This is the kind of song I wish that they had at the end of all those romantic movies where you're just. Your emotions are all strewn all over the theater, and you like, is there a lesson here? Uh, is there, please, is there a lesson in this? And this song really is like, like the lesson that there's, there is something beyond. But you, I could feel the catharsis of just writing it and singing it.
You probably, that's probably how you heal, just hearing this song and singing it to yourself. Exactly, it's amazing. Like I wrote this before I was in this intense undoing of, of specialness and it's almost like I wrote it, like the call of my heart was was so there before I even knew it, like when I was trying to hold on and then, yeah. So it could be like the Lila, this song goes out tonight to Emily and... Tyler. Uh, <laughs> hope we hold you in our prayers for this. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Healed. Healed. You're already healed. <laughs>
So fair. 